Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a interesting issue of why Reddit, the main magic Reddit, really dislikes Rudy. Now, I will go ahead and say that Rudy has influenced the market, and I have benefited from that. I have hundreds, if not thousands, of bulk reserve list cards that now theoretically, quotation marks, are worth a lot of money. That in the past, the only reason I've accumulated so many is because I, I played a game, I've been playing the game for so long, and I could never get rid of these cards. Like, there was no way to get rid of them outside of donating them, or even when you took them to, I remember taking them to a few local stores, and because these cards from Mirage and Visions and Seed of Innocence, which went from $0.05 cents to $20, I think it's real price is probably around $4 maybe. These cards did not have a gold symbol. So people would not even buy it for the bulk price. They wanted to buy it for the bulk bulk price, which I wasn't going to do because I knew they were rares. The majority of card shops four or five years ago would not even buy these cards that are currently spiking very hard from Maraz and Visions at bulk price, bulk rare price. They wanted to buy it for, what was it, uh, $2 for every thousand of them? Well, if I sold a thousand Seed of Innocence for $2, I would be selling 20,000 quote taste and marks value for $2. That's how insane this has got. Uh, people were paying less than, or people were paying Two tenths of a cent to buy list to buy this card. That's how much a store was. How, that was how much the majority of stores were paying for these reserve list bulk rares. Because to new players, they can't really sell it to new players because it doesn't. I mean, it looks like a common to them, right? And now you're looking at Seed of Innocence. I saw that go for twenty bucks recently. I was like, what? I, again, I'm not sure who's buying it or what the whole plan is. Uh, you know, I'm not part of that. But it's interesting. It is quite interesting to see. And I think Rudy is the main cause of this, which has created this Reddit who already is very, very picky and on who it loves and who it hates into this tilly of jealousy. I think they're jelly. So if you're sitting on a pile of bulk mirage, like these pirates and, you know, just like the random trash, like I can't even, you have to understand from my point of view, I couldn't light these cards on fire and get a, rid of them. But now, now, I mean, they're all like five to 10 to $20 now. And it's like, what? <laughs> like <laughs> cards from the dark. Frankenstein's monster is experiencing a buyout right now. You look at that card, it's very ugly. There's no re Pixie Queen, which is absolute garbage, is a $20 card now. And this is the alpha investment effect. Uh, so if anyone or any type of, quote, investor, magic player were to benefit from this, it would be me. Now, also his business model, one of the reasons that I decided to jump in now, I mean, my store has, I, I did make one change that he didn't do. I do not believe Rudy has employees at his store. I believe his model is very simple. He's using it as a warehouse and he's using it as a place to buy collections. He does not have FNM. He's probably not a WPN. Um, he, it's unlikely that his store is a real store when you think about, you know, going to the FNM, a pre-release or something like that. I think it's just a warehouse plus a place to buy collections. And in terms of collections, you go on his channel. What is he buying? Is he buying standard boxes, guys? Like, is that what he's buying? Like, I'm confused. Is he buying standard boxes? No, he's selling standard boxes. He's buying reserve list cards. The model is so simple that if you just follow the baseline model of, hey, I'm going to open a store. The store's main objective is to get people to come in and sell me their reserve list cards at massive discounts because I'm a card store. 
my card store or the card store I used to work uh, not work at. I didn't work at it. The card store I used to go to would buy cards from players all the time at 10%. 10%. And these were some valuable cards. I remember the foil, a, a player sold multiple foil Zendikar fetch lands, which were at the time worth $100, $200 for like $10 of snacks. Like, I don't know why this happens or how it happens, but I can tell you that it consistently happens over and over again that people will take their collections, they no longer want to play Magic, they no longer want to be associated with Magic, and they'll sell them for 10%. 10% was what DNA Comics paid. And I'm going to just say its name because it no longer does Magic. I am going to pay much higher, and I am hungry for these reserve list collections. So what, what's happening here is you have people who don't have reserve list cards and they're all getting jelly. Uh, is there any other way to explain it except, look, if you have these cards and they're spiking like insane and every day I go on the website and it's another, it's Seed of Innocence, it's another card from Revisions, it's this card and that card, it's like, wait a second, I own 100 copies of that card. Oh, I own 150 copies of this one. Buy out, buy out, buy out. Do I think it's healthy? No. I don't. But do I think it's going to stop? The answer is also no. And the reason I don't think it's going to stop is I will give you the uh, real deal. If you guys have stayed until the video here, this is what I think is going to happen. Every seven years, America has a recession. We are a little out in this. Um, the recovery period was a lot longer than it usually is. So the when we have a recession, you might talk about the price of magic cards going down. And that's what the majority of people will say. That is actually not true. Uh, when you have a recession, magic cards during the last recession of 2008, I remember that because I was still in college. I was in NYU. I had done a summer internship at one of those uh, big um, banks that uh, bankrupt. Not going to say which one, but it was interesting. And I actually did my internship during the bankruptcy or during that period. And every, no one knew that it would go bankrupt, to be honest. Well, no one on my level knew it would be bankrupt. Everything seemed to be going okay. I saw Magic cards, and this was a time that Magic was, yeah, I think, having trouble. I remember they did a Washington Square Park event, and no one showed up, but they still blogged about it. And it was the most embarrassing blog I've ever read because it literally was a bunch of nerds with giant oversized cards and trying to get random people to play magic. And the random people said, nah, I'm good. And I remember talking to my friends who, uh, again, they went, everyone went to NYU and Washington Square Park is the campus park. And they were like, oh, those nerds? <sighs> no, I would never talk to them. So it was interesting. So it wasn't during a time that magic was like very hyped or it was growing. It was during a time that magic was receding and then you had this depression come in. And you know what? What happened? People stopped buying boats. They stopped buying motorcycles. They stopped buying second, fifth, tenth homes. They stopped buying timeshare. They had money for entertainment, but they wanted to spend it on something else. And that was magic. And in particular, the eternal formats. That is what I'm prepping for. I probably shouldn't tell you this because, you know, I mean, everything I'm doing, you know, why open a store in this climate? No, it's not really a store store. I'm never going to have FNM. I'm never going to have casual players. I'm never going to have any of that stuff because I think that's a negative expected value. I made one mistake. I did it differently from how Rudy did it. And mainly because I didn't realize that he didn't have employees until he started making his videos and there was no employees in his videos. I hired employees. That has, you're, talk, locking, you're talking about $40,000 of overhead, just employee. Just that one employee is what you, I would pay them a year. Now, if we had two, we're talking about, what is it, $35,000, like $75,000 of overhead. For two people taking two two hour twenty two minute lunch breaks, right, and two people who, if I left them in charge of the uh, physical store, I guarantee you that the physical store would never be open. But like, why do I need a physical store? 
I needed to buy collections and that's it. And then like maybe sell like online inventory. I'm not sure uh, if I want to do that part yet, but I definitely want to buy collections and I'm hungry to buy these collections. And the structure I have is my rent is kind of subsidized by the actual marketing company. So I don't need to worry too much about the rent because it can always be the marketing company is also at the same location. So I will just have a marketing company that people occasionally come in to sell collections to. You, I am in the mode of acquisition. Now that I bought my company back, I have money. Before I wasn't paid. I wasn't paid for 120 days. That's how I bought my company back. I own 29% of my company. Now I own 100%. That 71% that I bought buyback was the most painful experience of my life. The other two partners were also lawyers. And the other partner was like, how can I put it? Like a very shady dude. And I had to buy them all out at a price that they were happy with. But now I'm hungry. And I'm going to chomp on reserve. Like It's like Falia. I knew Falia would be Falia. I knew Lyra would, would be Lyra. Lyra, like I would say, 80-20. Mm, 80% that Lyra would, would be what she is today. And Falia was a, like 95% I knew Falia. I looked at it. I looked at the price point under $2. And I said, wow, this is... Uh, it's kind of a mind misunderstanding this card. Then I played with it. I know, I know what's going to happen with the reserve list. It will have a bubble, but the bu I don't need Seed of Innocence to be $20. I just need it not to be four or two tenths of a cent, right? If it goes from two tenths of a cent to $2, a hundred copies of that is $200. Even if it goes to $4, $5, a hundred copies of this really crappy card, and I will show you in videos how many copies of these crappy cards I have, it's 500 bucks if I can sell it online, right? It's like $500 just like came from crap. And it's like, wow, you know, this piece of poo is now 500, a $500 bill, nice. But all of these pieces of poo are now becoming five hundred dollar bills, and I don't, I don't encourage it. But this is a reality. You can complain all you want, and the people complaining, I don't think, have reserve list stakes. Um, and Rudy's stakes has to be way higher than the mine, way, way, way higher. Um, I mean, you just take a look at his videos for the dual lands, and it's very clear that, yeah. He's got a bunch of them, and he's still buying them. Anyway, bye, guys.